playing with the model heart. Uh, Zishi here, underscore in that statement here, being that uh, things got a little dodgy, probably a little more than dodgy back about a month ago. Uh, today's May 6th, 2024. And on April 7th of 2024, I uh, went down to the local climbing gym, do a little climbing, a little bouldering, and uh, had a out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. Yeah, uh, according to the folks there, I had uh, either fallen or jumped off, which is fairly standard on a boulder problem, but you're not up that high. Came down, landed on the mats, and uh, and I took a couple steps and face planted, face first into the into the bouldering pads, and uh, yeah, saw the electro physio cardio doc today. Got seen a number of doctors get a quite a number of tests done. Five different medications, Toprol, Zortin, Zortin, uh, Eliquis, uh, Clopidogrel. What's the other one? I just, <laughs> trying to, oh, regular Frankenstein's uh, the babe here. I got uh, a number of people working on me, which I'm appreciative of. Don't get me wrong. I mean, as the, uh, I think the Dr. Day summed it up. Dr. Lund said, ah, usually when people have a cardiac arrest, you hear it from somebody else. And so much that, uh, yeah, their survivability numbers are, they're not good. Uh, the type of uh, heart failure I had, uh, approximately 10% of people live. So I'm kind of lucky, one in, one in 10 people that uh, squeak through and then no small number of that 10% that do, approximately half of that number have quite severe or debilitating cognitive impairment, which uh, at least it seems like my brain came through pretty well too. So, ah, 95% chance of having it go kitty wampus the other way. I lucked out, won the biggest lotto by far of my life. Uh, I've had a number of close calls through the years but uh yeah the thing that occurred a month ago that took the uh took the prize <laughs> knock on wood hopefully hopefully some tells me probability and statistics and everything else i'm probably not going to have a closer call at least uh, uh in this form um but uh but yeah i just went down to go climb in the gym i have memory of leaving my house uh, around a little after 10 o'clock uh, Sunday morning, April 7th, and I woke up 12, 14 hours later, almost at midnight, at the McKD uh, uh, recovery section in, the, in their cardio unit. And uh, so I've pieced all of this together, even though I'm giving you from the horse's mouth itself as far as my uh, take on my cardiac arrest event, I have no memory whatsoever. I remember leaving my house and I woke up hours later having had one of the uh, deepest, uh, most peaceful uh, naps, rest, slumbers of my life. The whole time, a lot of other folks were instrumental in saving my life. Uh, so I face planted on the mat, and uh, the uh, manager, Chet, he ran over there. He could discern no pulse. I guess I didn't have any real respiratory function going on either. Yeah, when you're not, when your heart's not beating and you're not breathing, it's not a good thing. And uh, fortunately, a woman, Emily, her and her fiance, James, were there. He was climbing. 
she was working out in the uh, weight section of the, the uh, Ogden front and uh, she realized something's going on, something's amiss. She ran over there and she literally saved my life. She a, a, works as a registered nurse at the KD Hospital, actually where I went. And she gave me life-saving CPR for probably seven, eight minutes. It took a number, it took about eight or nine minutes, it looks like, for the EMTs, the EMS vehicle to get there from a few blocks away. Um, but she was giving me CPR and at least got some soreness in my rib cage, a couple rib fractures, but uh, it's a very, very small price to pay for uh, being alive. And uh, so she gave me CPR. James was holding my head. He said after uh, a few minutes, I guess my eyes were closed and I opened my eyes and he said it was the most haunting stare he'd ever seen. It was like I was just looking out literally into oblivion, and I'm sure I was. But then I closed my eyes, uh, or eyelids, not that long thereafter. <laughs> Save them having to look at me in that state. So the EMTs got there, came in, they took over, they intubated me, I got to air pipe down in there to pump some air into my lungs. I guess I had some kind of respiratory function going, maybe it was from a ventilator. And uh, they tried to, uh, give me, uh, I think it's the AED or whatever, the uh, uh, defibrillator. And, uh, and they were not able to actually get my uh, heart back up and running with that which given the length of time that it had uh, gone probably close to in 10 minutes at that point that uh, yeah, my heart had not been beating on its own. And uh, uh, so then um, they took me out of the ambulance and uh, I guess at that point people, the uh, manager, uh, floor manager on that Sunday, uh, he uh, had contacted uh, uh, Shane Bryson, who's a good friend of mine, he's the uh, general manager down there at the front facility in Ogden. And Shane had asked him, well, what do you think's going on with Eric? Do you think he's going to make it? And, and I guess Chet said, I think he's died. And, uh, but uh, not quite yet. <laughs> it was close, though. Your heart hasn't been beating for, I think it was probably close to 15 minutes before they actually got my pup back up and kind of beating on its own. And what it seems as though, uh, referring to the report that I received from uh, the medical services, uh, was uh, they gave me a, a good dose of uh, epinephrine intravenously, and uh, and that uh, kick-started it, got it back up running enough where when I got to the hospital, they were able to do a couple of quick uh, uh, assessments and uh, uh, scans, uh, uh, images and uh, discerned, oh, it got uh, uh, massive, it sounded like pretty much almost complete occlusion of the uh, main left artery descending. It's like the principal artery that uh, oxygenates the uh, heart muscle. And they put a stent in and uh, rest is at least somewhat immediate history. I came back and uh, I'm here, and uh, surprisingly, I feel pretty darn good. I mean, uh, even been out to uh, a couple little sessions of bouldering outside, feel the rock, and uh, so I'm just super thankful to be here. Just all, largely just all I have is just an amazing sense of gratitude and uh, happiness to be here with what feels like bonus time. I, I'm on uh, many levels, I feel like probably in an alternate universe, I probably a number of alternate universes. April 7th, 2024 would have been my end date, uh, at least in this form. What happens after that, who knows? But uh, um, yeah, what a joy, amazing thing. It's life, 
being alive, inhabiting our bodies, and uh, super psyched. Oh, a great thank you. It's actually a, 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 a beautiful thing. A, a, the, a, a, all of the uh, uh, people that have reached out, family and friends, and uh, contacting and just uh, talking with people is, uh, it is the essence of this journey, is the uh, connections that we make with, uh, with human beings, our fellow brothers and sisters, and uh, it is, uh, uh, I feel the most profound thing that uh, uh, occurs. Obviously, we are on this world, in this earth, uh, uh, that we are part of, and, and we feel integrated, and uh, uh, part of that is of, of great importance as well. Mostly just uh, thank you. Thank you to all my friends and family and uh, to uh, the grand forces of the universe that uh, allowed me a little more time here in this form. God bless y'all. All right. Have an awesome day. Happy trails. Oh, I'll okay. include a couple little uh, bouldering snips here. Yeah. As they say something about Taking the taking the boy out of the holler, but uh, can't take the holler out of the boy or something. I don't know. <laughs>